you know, we tend to think and subconsciously believe that the realm, the spirit realm, is not as real as the natural realm. And we think that consciously or unconsciously because we live most of our time in the natural realm without spiritual awareness. And so, in our thinking and our consciousness and our awareness, we tend to think that the world which you can touch with your hand and see with your physical eyes and the world around you is more real, is the real world. But really, the opposite is true, you know. The Bible says that God is immortal, invisible. That's true to the natural eyes, but he is not invisible to the eyes of our spirit. The Bible tells us that we live by faith and not by sight. It's not talking about spiritual sight, it's talking about what we see with our physical eyes. But we, in the realm of the spirit, we ought to develop and have spiritual sight. We're told that Jesus wants to be our friend. Okay, how do you become friends with an invisible spirit? Um, you know, um, Jesus said, henceforth I call you no longer servants but I call you friends in John 15 and verse 15 becoming friends with an invisible spirit he can only do that with your spirit he can only know him after the spirit after your recreated spirit and um, firstly we don't walk by natural sight the Bible talks about walking in the spirit but we don't walk by natural sight we walk with the eyes of our heart or with spiritual sight not with the natural eyes, but with the eyes of our spirit, the eyes of our heart. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 puts it this way, Paul prayed that, the, that you would, the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. He wasn't talking about these eyes. He was talking about, and we'll look at the scripture a little later, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, or the eyes of your heart being enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of your calling. You see, what are the eyes of your heart? What are the eyes of your understanding or the eyes of your heart? Okay, now 2 Corinthians 3.18 you're very familiar with. With an open face we are behold the glory, the glory of God. With an unveiled, open to the realm of the spirit, beholding as in, in glass the glory of the Lord. It's a spiritual thing, it's not just imagination because we are changed when we do that into the same image even as by the Spirit of the Lord 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 says while we look not at things which can be seen with these eyes but at those things which are not seen how do you look at things which are not seen? with the eyes of the heart the eyes of the new creation man the eyes of your spirit for the things which are seen are temporal, that's what we see with our physical eyes around us. But the things which are not seen, they are what? Eternal. Okay, the realm of spirit. We're told to look unto Jesus, Hebrews 12, 2. You're told to be behold him. Okay, you know, when Adam sinned, he's lost his ability to see in the spirit realm. It may not have been overnight, but there was a decline when man no longer began to live from his spirit that began to live from his soul and his physical senses. Okay? And when man began to do that, because it blotted out that the, the realm of his spirit within him, Adam sinned, he lost his ability to see in the spirit realm. When you are born again, the new creation man, through the new birth, you have the ability to see in the spirit. When you are born again, you have the ability to see in the spirit. Okay. Jesus said in John 3, 3 Jesus answered and said unto him Verily, verily, I say unto you Except a man be born again What? He cannot see the kingdom of heaven Now, you know, we always put scriptures like this Into the fact that when we die We go to heaven, we'll see the kingdom of heaven But really that is not the context And it can mean that but it has a more close-up meaning, a, a more uh, Jesus answers, and unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. When you are born again, you have the ability, inherent ability, to see the kingdom realm, the kingdom of God. Okay, that's heaven, angels, his kingdom, which is spiritual. So we have the ability when you are born again. And then Jesus went on in John chapter 18 and verse 36. He said, Jesus answered and said, My kingdom is not of this world. But he said, when you're born again, you can see the kingdom. 
But he said, my kingdom is not of this realm. It's in the invisible world. It is in the realm of spirit. Now, there are all kinds in the realm of spirit. The kingdom of heaven includes angels. It includes heaven. It includes the cloud of witnesses. It includes Jesus. It includes the whole realm of the spirit of God incorporated within the kingdom of God. Like today, there were many, many angels here worshipping with us. There was uh, people from the cloud of witnesses worshipping with us today. That's the kingdom of God realm. Okay? The realm of spirit. And he said, if you are born again, you can see into that realm. You don't have to be super saints. You just have to be born again. And uh, unless you're born again, you can't see into the kingdom of God realm. You might see into the other side of the spirit realm. Satan's side, but you cannot see the kingdom side, the kingdom of God. Okay. So you'll be born again, you come into the kingdom of God, then you must learn how to move from your new creation man. You must learn to move in the spirit, from your spirit. Learn to move in that realm, learn to see in that realm, learn to hear in that realm, learn to feel in that realm. The kingdom of God realm. You have to learn. It's something which we have to learn. You know, Jesus, or, or God, or, or Jesus, are both, they both have form and substance. You know, we, we tend to think of God as some kind of ethereal being, kind of wisp of smoke, and you can't kind of get a hold, or you can't touch, and it's, it's this mysterious realm of spirit. Um, but they have form. Spirit has form and substance. For instance, in Nahum 1.3, it tells us that God has feet. Okay? In Exodus 33.22, he has hands. Exodus 33.22, he has face, form, and substance. So we say then, what is God made of? Okay? And uh, he is made of spirit. You know? But spirit has form and substance. You know, the Bible tells us that God made everything that we see around us, out of himself. You know, in, let's look at that scripture. It's in, in the book of Romans, the last chapter of the book of Romans, I think Romans chapter 11. Um, and uh, it tells us that he made everything, everything that is made. He made it out of himself. In verse 36 it says, um, of, of Romans chapter 11, verse 36, it says, from of him, out of him, from of himself, and through him uh, there are all things which exist out of him and what is he? he is spirit he is power, he is light, he is spirit out of him and through him all things were made to whom glory, to whom is glory forever and ever so God says he made everything out of his own substance when God spoke and created this world it came out of him okay, spirit God is a spirit. And so, that, that form of spirit is a much superior substance than the physical realm. But out of that realm of spirit, God is a spirit. He created all things. Everything was formed and fashioned out of himself. And uh, he is made of spirit, but what is spirit? Well, one of the spirit's substance is mostly manifest in the form of light power, light. You know, scientists are now beginning to tell us that the basis of all matter is compressed light. Now, again, close to the truth there. The basis of all matter is compressed light. And um, they're getting very, very close to the truth. Light is a form of energy, is a form of power, when you get in the presence of Lord, the Lord Jesus, he will emanate, depending on your spiritual state, a degree of energy or light or power, call it what you like. He, he, he emanates that. You know, the Bible tells us that this power and this glory, it can be so great that an angel came down, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, and he, he, he had such, this angel had such power which had emanated from God into this angel. The Bible says that he lighted up the whole earth. Imagine, you see, the, the power, the, the, the energy. Light is a form of energy or power. The Bible says God is light. Okay? His substance is light. His motivation is love. His substance is light. God is light. God is love. He doesn't have these things. He is made of these things. 
these are spirit substance. God is light. And um, He is the source, the Bible says, He is the source of all power, all energy. In Psalm 63 and verse 2 it says, David says, I long to see your power and your glory in your sanctuary. You'll notice how often these two things go together, power and glory. He is light, or glory, the manifestation of glory is light. And uh, the power of God, again in Psalm 145 verse 11, they shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. They go together, you see. When you get into the presence of God, the Bible says when we behold Him in His presence, something happens to you because you're in the presence of light, you're in the presence of glory, and you're in the presence of power. That, that power, that presence, that energy emanating from the Lord begins to change you. The more you behold Him in a consciousness of His presence, the more you begin to change. Beholding Him, you are changed into the same likeness. He is light, He is glory, He is power. He is all of these energies that come forth from Him. Everything was created out of Him, out of His light, and out of His glory, and out of His power. And as you're in the presence of God, that has tremendous ability to change you when you're exposed to that light and glory and presence of God, the glory and the light, the power of God. So, you know, the spirit world is more real than the natural. It is superior in every way to the natural realm. Angels are beings of light because they spend time in the presence of the Lord. Okay? Now, when angels spend some time upon the earth, their glory begins to diminish because their only source of glory and light is the presence of God. And, uh, you know, they spend time in the presence of God, imbibing of His light and His power. They are angels, they are beings of light. But the Bible also tells us that you, your new created man, is a being of what? Light. Not only did He say that Jesus is the light of the world, He said what? You are the light of the world. That's your recreated man, your new spirit, is supposed to begin to shine. And when it gets to the point when we're exposed to that energy source, that presence of God, like the angels are in heaven, transfiguration will begin to take place. As your spirit, the energy, the life, and the power, and the glory of God in your spirit begins to um, emanate, and transfiguration comes from the inside out not from the outside in. It comes when your spirit is exposed to the glory and the presence and the power of God to such a degree that it begins to emanate that glory, that power, that energy, that life of God himself. And slowly transfiguration um, begins to take place. The Bible says they looked to the Lord and they were lightened. And that's, a, that, 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 that's the glory and the presence of the Lord. And um, so how do we mortals live in and work with that realm of light and power? That's the purpose of the series. How do we live in, walk in, work with? You see, the anointing of God simply is a form of light, that's all. It's a, it's a clothing of light. The, the anointing is the light of God upon us. It's his power, it is his energy, and um, you know, as in the natural, so in the spiritual, the Bible talks about, you know, light, white light breaks down into, if you put white light through a prism, it'll come out of seven colors, the colors of the rainbow, that's what happens in the rainbow, because light coming through a, a, a raindrop emanates as light, coming through the prism, you have the breaks down into seven colors. The Bible talks about that because around the throne of God there is the rainbow and the seven spirits of the Lord. Isaiah in the Old Testament, most of you are familiar with it, in Isaiah 11, lists seven anointings. Each of those anointings are anointings of light which have a color. Okay? And, um, you know, there is a seven branch candlestick. The breakdown of the anointing is simply a breakdown of light in different wavelengths in the spirit realm upon us. The anointing of the spirit. Now, you can only relate to and work with that realm by working out of your own spirit, your recreated spirit, your natural realm. Your natural man cannot work with that because it's a spirit realm. 
It is the realm of God. You can only work with that out of your recreated spirit when you were born again. Your new creation man lives in that realm. But he is encased in a physical body and clothed with a soul. But he lives. He exists in the realm of spirit. You have a man inside of you which exists solely in the realm of spirit, the kingdom realm. Okay? Clothed with the outer man. Now, your new creation man, you have to learn to work with your spirit, your new created spirit. You have to learn how to enter God's realm. To do that, you do it with your spirit. First Corinthians 2.14 says, the natural man, that's your natural man, the outer man, the natural man, does not receive the things of the spirit of God. He cannot know them. Because why? They are in the realm of spirit. And it can only be spiritually discerned. The things of God can only be spiritually discerned. So this natural man cannot know those things. We can only know them from our recreated spirit or with your spirit. And we realize and we understand that your spirit has the full set of senses. And those senses in your spirit are far superior to your natural senses in your physical body. You know, taste, touch, hearing, sight, all of those five senses. And, uh, but your spirit senses are far more acute, far more accurate, far more superior. And, um, you know, your spirit, you recreate a man has eyes. That's when the Bible talks about the eyes of the heart, he's talking about the eyes of your spirit, the recreated man. He has eyes and ears and hands and perception and feeling. He is a person. God is a person and he is a spirit. Your recreated man is a person and he is a spirit. Okay? With a full set of senses, separate to our natural senses. Okay? And um, fellowship with Jesus then requires, and fellowship and awareness of the kingdom of God realm requires us, requires us the, the ability to be in spirit. You know? John 4 24 says, God is a spirit. And if we're going to relate to him, if we're going to worship him, we have to worship him in what? In spirit. Out of that recreated new man. We worship God in spirit. Revelation 1.10 says, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Then he began to see spiritually and hear. He said, I saw and I heard. But first he was in the spirit. Okay, now I was in the Spirit in the Lord's day, he said, then I saw vision and I heard Spirit hearing, he heard. Okay, now we are told to live in the Spirit. The Bible tells us that we are supposed to serve God with our Spirit. We walk in the Spirit, with the Spirit direction and insight in Spirit, you see. What does that mean? That's a lot of definition we can give for what it means to be in Spirit. Um, you know, it, well, it means to be working out of your spirit faculties with a conscious awareness of the kingdom realm. Sensitive to your spirit. Your spirit is joined to the Lord and is one spirit with the Lord. Your spirit is joined to the Holy Spirit. When you become sensitive to your spirit, you become sensitive to the Lord because the two are joined. Okay? Now, so when you become sensitive to your inner man, sensitive to your spirit, and begin to work out of your spirit, you begin to work with God, because your spirit is joined to the Lord. And in it is the nature of the Lord. So, you know, in touch, it means you're in touch with the spirit realm. You're in touch with the kingdom of God realm, which is an invisible kingdom. That kingdom is not where? Of this world. It's in the world of spirit. In spirit, in touch. Now, how do we do that? How do we bridge the gap from the natural to the spiritual? Well, the Bible tells us how. Okay. This is where all the pe religious people begin to manifest. Okay. But the Bible clearly tells us how to get into the realm of God's spirit, the kingdom realm. 